Praise God. It's good to be in the Lord's house. Amen. And uh, if you've been here for the last several Sundays, we're already on week five. Man, time passes, doesn't it? Can you believe the fall type weather already in the evenings? But uh, we've been on a five week series, uh, Faith That Gets Results. And so, you know, in our, in our lives and in our ministry and what God has called us to do, we, we don't just want to... Uh, you know, kind of go through the motions for 10 or 20 or 30 years, but we want to actually get some results. Amen. You know, after 10 years of full-time ministry, you, you thank God for, you know, what God is doing, but you want to see some fruit that remains for the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. So uh, today we're looking at John chapter 15, the New Testament, uh, St. John chapter 15. And I know you believe in God with me. Amen. We, uh, have our faith linked together. Praise the Lord. And uh, we'll, we'll record this message for my grandson and we'll let him hear it also. Praise God. And uh, he already responds to voices. And uh, he's just the cutest thing. I mean, praise God. We are blessed. Father, thank you for the word of God. Lord, your word, its spirit, its life, its health to all of our flesh. We trust the Holy Spirit again today for utterance in the Holy Spirit that I should open my mouth with boldness and speak the word as the oracles of God. A word in season that the people of God, even as David seemingly faced overwhelming odds against the giant Goliath, that, Father, you would give unto us five smooth stones from the living word this morning. And, Father, we thank you that you've not given us a spirit of fear in this hour, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And by the grace of God, we're able to cast all of our care, all of our worries, all of our anxiety over onto you, Lord, because you watch over us watchfully and affectionately because you love us. So we thank you for your great care. We thank you for the mighty Holy Spirit who's given us the spirit of a conqueror and overcomer. Thank you, Lord, for the word of God that slays every giant that comes against us in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? Jesus is speaking here in John 15. And faith that overcomes always bases its confidence on what God said. On what God said. Now years ago, I don't want to kind of show my age. I'm, I'm grandpa now. But, but years ago, they, they had a television commercial and it said, it said, you know, there's a busy place. Everybody's having lunch. They're all talking. And it said, when E.F. Hutton talks, everybody listens. And so... E.F. Hutton was supposed to have the inside corner on investing. So supposedly what he was saying was worth listening to. Say this out loud. The Bible is God speaking to me. And you can look at your neighbor and say the Bible is God speaking to you. So, so God is speaking. The question is whether or not we're listening and doing what he said. So God has already spoken in the Bible. In the beginning was the Word. But here in John 15, 1, Jesus said of Himself, I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch, verse 2, in, in me, somebody say in Him, that beareth not fruit, He taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, He purges it, so that it may bring forth fruit. More fruit. Somebody said more fruit. more fruit. So God has not just called you. Thank God that we heard about Jesus. And at some point we accepted Christ as our Savior. And thank God for that. So God brings us past con conversion and over into discipleship. And in discipleship is where you begin to bear fruit. So God wants to bring you to a place where you're not just... You know, crossing off days on your calendar. Thank God I made it another day. But you're actually living with purpose. I said you're actually living with divine purpose. You find out 
you know, everybody's got different uh, skills and talents and abilities and, and gifts. Amen. So I've, I've, I've often said in the church, we've had people that say, well, you know, pastor, I want to get involved. I want to help. I want to serve. I say, well, that's good. Uh, and so they say, well, I'm not sure where is a good fit for me to serve. So they have tried some areas and, and they weren't quite sure what God had called them to, but they found out where they're not called. Because they, they, thank God they had a heart to help, but they didn't, they didn't have a grace to operate in the place. You know, they had the right heart. And so, and so the Lord's purpose is that we would bear fruit, or in other words, find our place in the body of Christ. See our, uh, you know, like with grandbaby, his, his hands and his feet, everything that God created is, is not just, you know, to look and say, man, what a cute baby. But they all have purpose. And function. And so there, you know, the eyes see. Amen. And the ears hear. They're not just hanging on the sides of your head. Your ears have a function to hear. Praise God. And so we as people or individuals in the church, we're not just called, thank God we sit under the word on Sunday morning, but then we're called to take that nourishment and that faith and to put it to use in this world that needs Jesus. <laughs> And so the body of Christ has a function to bear fruit. And so God doesn't just, you know, plant churches and say, well, I, I hope this one makes it. I hope this one's a success. And, you know, at a certain number of people, it's a quote unquote success. No, if you did what God called you to do. We, we have this problem sometimes in the body of Christ of comparisonitis. We're, we're content with what God gave us until we look at somebody else. And then we compare ourselves with them. That's not your calling. They're doing what God's called them to do. So praise God for it. If they're, if they're ten times bigger or whatever it is, thank God. That's what they're called to do. You do what you're called to do. Amen. And if you're just faithful with what the Lord gave you, whether anybody's ever heard your name or not. Amen. You know, uh, Pastor Joel Osteen, he was he was 18 years behind the camera before anybody saw him in front of him. 18 years. What if he just what if he just got tired of it after 12? He said, I've been behind this camera for 12 years. My promotion's never come. But but being being faithful in that least God, Jesus said, I'm the vine, and from from being in Christ, you're gonna you're gonna be branches. So as soon as, you know, in my garden, when those, when those branches get out of control or they, you know, those bushes try to get 12 foot high and I, and I start trimming them, when you, the, when you trim them from the vine, they start to shrivel up. So there's no life apart from the Word. There's no life apart from God's Word. So faith that gets results is based in, rooted in, grounded in what God said. I'm not coming based on what, what my theory from my opinion. But it's based on John 15, what he said. He said, I'm the true vine. Every branch in me that doesn't bear fruit. So there's two categories. There's branches that don't bear any fruit. And then there's branches that bear fruit. Amen. Praise God. I said, praise God. So he purges it, and that purging process isn't always doesn't seem pleasant because it. Some, listen, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna bless you with this this morning. Purging the, during the purging process, it actually looks like decrease. Sometimes you've gone forward with God, and you said, "By now, I would expect it to got to this certain level." But in a purging process, when God kind of cuts things back or some things that are there but they're not bearing any fruit. To a lot of people looking on, it looks like decrease. They're like, man, they must not be doing what's right there. That looks like less than they had uh, five years ago. But, but there is a season or a time of purging so that the next harvest season you bear even more fruit than you did before. So some people have mistaken the purging season as decrease. I've seen that and I've been there and I've asked God about it before because it looked like decrease. And the Lord said, no, there's a purging process so that you can come back even more fruitful than you were before in your last season with me. Hallelujah. 
So in verse 3, Jesus said, Now you're clean through the word which I've spoken to you. So God's word has the power in it, in Christ, to cleanse you from sin and wrong thinking. The world is full of wrong thinking. Jesus said, here's the key to uh, getting results in your faith. Abide in me. So he didn't say, visit me on Sundays. The word abide means that becomes where you live at. You, we're not just Christians on Sunday in church. Praise God. Because a lot of times when you step out in the world, that's where the challenge comes. Because everybody out there is not saved and walking in love and full of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. So Jesus said, the key is you live in me, abide in me, and I live in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except you abide in me. So either uh, one pastor wrote a book, uh, and it was a choice. It was faith or frustration. So it's going to be a choice. You're, you're either going to learn how to walk by faith in the kingdom, or you're just going to kind of be frustrated. Because things aren't, aren't seeming to work as they should. Are you here this morning? How many of you know sometimes people have even gotten mad at God when something didn't seem to come through as they thought it should? They got mad at the Lord. Where there's no, there's no problem with God. There's no lack of power in His Word. It's on the receiving end. I said it's on the receiving end. Can you see that? So it's not with God and His Word. It's as we say, we say, Father, where did I miss it? But you know, sometimes we get full of pride and we and we think, well, I did everything right. I, we check off our little list of here, here's the here's the five keys to breakthrough. I, I did all of them, and and how come it didn't happen, Lord? And we question God. But how many of you know that's the wrong that's the wrong thinking? We we should come back and say, Lord, Lord, where did I miss it? Where did I mess up? makes a lot more sense because God doesn't miss it. He doesn't miss it. A hundred times out of a hundred, He's perfectly lit. If you look at the life of Jesus, He didn't miss it. Now, some of the people looking on, His disciples, they sometimes they thought He missed it. That, that sermon He preached in John chapter 6, on a particular day when He preached about, He said, He said, like, like my, my blood is drink for you and, and I'm going to be part. And they said, they said, Lord, what are you preaching on? And a lot of the crowd left. John 6, 6, 6. From that day, many of them left him and followed him no more. So they, they thought he missed it that day. They said that, that, that sermon, that, you know, <laughs> that was over their heads. And uh, I would have waited a few Sundays to preach that one. But, but, but the Lord is always perfectly led. He said, I say nothing except my father says it. I do nothing except I see my father do it. But how many times have we just done things and said things and then just said, okay, God bless it. So if we're going to have faith that actually gets results, amen, then we've got to base it on what the Lord said. And he said, we've got to live in him or live in his word. And so even, even our scripture reading isn't just something we visit on Sundays, once a week. We listen. We need we need more word than once a week. Because I can always tell. You know, you you can tell when you're uh, a lot of people now. Everybody has a cell phone. Even the kids have cell phones, so they can tell when their phone starts acting funny, or all the apps aren't running, and they see that low battery. And so I can always tell it. it it's evident that my word level's low. <laughs> when my word level gets low, I said, you know, I need about five quarts. I need, I need about five chapters <laughs> built back up. Amen. Now listen, I, I, uh, I sold cars for about a year. I sold uh, new Hondas for about a year in the car business. And periodically on my break, I had to, I kept the scripture, I kept the word in my car. And on my break, you know, instead of just eating a Snickers bar, I was opening the Bible. Because I said, in this environment, I need to be built up <laughs> in the Word of God. So Jesus said, if you live in me, the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Verse 4, except it abide in the vine, no more can you except you abide in me. I'm the vine, you are the branches. So let's not get that confused. 
He that abideth in me, I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. So your level of fruitfulness in your life is directly related to how much you abide in Christ. More in the Word, more fruit. Less in the Word, less fruit. And even sometimes when you're less in the Word, you look back and say, Lord, I remember a more fruitful season in my life. But He said, if you, if you abide in Me, if you live in the Word, then you start to get supernatural results. It's your natural with His super. And when they come together, when you're in the Word, then, then things supernaturally start to happen. God starts working on your behalf and you say, hey, my faith is working. <laughs> and that's where people get excited. I'm telling you, been there. And when other people get there, you, you love to see that. As a pastor, I love to see when faith is working in other people's lives. I love that. I love every good report and testimony that comes into the ministry. Love it. And, you know, it builds other people's faith. Because a lot of times, a lot of people are going through the same struggles and problems. And challenges they just don't want to tell anybody. Hey, I've been to the Rhema fellowships. You want to walk in top of the world, you know, mountaintop every time. Hallelujah. You know, how are you, brother? Blessed and anointed and victorious. Glory to God. You know, no matter what you're facing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so the only way that can actually be a reality, thank God for that confession, but that that's actually a reality is that we live in the Word. Not just... Weekend visitation. Praise God. So God wants full custody. <laughs> full custody, Amen. And we don't when we when we come to Christ, we don't we don't need that paternity test. We know who our Father is. The Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're not confused anymore. Praise God. We've been refathered by God. He said in verse six, if a if a man abide not in me. This is what happens, church. This is what we've seen happen. We've seen these faith crashes and burns. He is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they're burned because they're just kind of now just a big pile of refuse. Because at one time they were, they were you know, fruit bearing. This is one thing about me. If I go to Lowe's or something like that, I like the trees that bear fruit. I don't like trees that just look pretty and say, I'm a tree. I mean, I want to be able to look at it and say, that's an apple tree because there's an apple. So, so if other people look at our lives, they, they, should, they should know that's a Jesus tree Amen. without any kind of fish symbol on our car any, because we're bearing fruit. We're bearing the fruit of the Spirit. We're, you can see the fruit. There's, there's pear trees and, you know, lemon trees and... I like those kind of trees because they're not just taking space in your garden. It's something good. Amen. And that's what God likes in His garden, in His church, that we're bearing fruit for the kingdom. Amen? Amen. Now here, we said all that to say this in verse 7, John 15, 7. This is one of Dad Hagen's favorite verses teaching on the subject of prayer. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, Ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Jesus said, the head of the church, and trust me, he knows how faith works. He knows everything there is to know about faith. If you live in me, if you abide in me, my words abide in you. And so, you know, I thank God for my wife talking to me about, you know, every time, like we drive through Suffolk, she talks, well, not every time, but she's talked about, Suffolk Christian Academy, you know, when she was a little girl, and they and they just had you memorize scriptures every week. And so, by the grace of God, I'm believing for a school for our grandson that that they memorize the word every week. And it really comes from the Hebrew tradition to train up a child. It didn't say give the child the option; it said train up a child. When you report to the military for basic training, they don't give you an option. Oh, um, what time, what kind of wake-up call would you like tomorrow morning? And we don't want to get you up too early. But there's training. Somebody say training. So in training, they get you up so that even when you leave that place, at that time of the morning, your eyes just open. 
Because you've been trained. They didn't suggest to you. We suggest, we suggest you be an early riser so that we can get things done that the military needs done. No, they come in there and they wake you up. Now, pastor can't really be like that. Pastor got to be now. Well, would you all please come to the Sunday school? Okay. okay. We would love to see your smiling face there. Praise the Lord. It would be so wonderful. <laughs> so he said, if you abide in me, if you live in me, my words abide in you. You shall ask what you will and it shall be done to you. So I like when I pray for something, when I want uh, my faith to get results, I don't just want to, you know, speak words into the air. But when, when I pray, and I know when you pray, you want to see results. And so I, I will base my prayer on at least, for, for myself, on at least three scriptures. I won't just say, Father, heal this person. I, I don't like, I like to say, you know, as the Word of God said, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So Dad Hagen would teach us Rama students years ago, decades ago. He said, find scriptures that cover your case. Whether it be healing, whether it be finances, whether it be marriage, or family, or relationships, whatever it is, or your government, Come on now, anybody can complain about the government, but how many people are doing what the little movie clip said and, and praying? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. That's, that's why the church has been frustrated. Listen, we've been, we, you know, wanting to criticize, but that's not changing anything. Our, our weapons are not natural or carnal, the way the world thinks. Our expression is in the spirit and in the authority of Jesus' name. And it's mighty to pull down strongholds. And you know, if you really study that, that about mental strongholds, that, that's where people get deceived. They believe a lie to be the truth. And so a praying church, a praying Christian brings forth fruit and faith that gets results because those strongholds are broken and finally people say, I see the light, I see the truth. I can't believe I believed that for all those years. The scales fall off their eyes through prayer. So when we're, when we're praying for all those type of scenarios, I like to find if we're going to have faith that gives results, at least, I put in my notes, two or three scriptures that, that cover your case, to base your faith on. Matthew 18, 16. Now, I might go through these quicker than you can turn there. They might show them on the screen. But Jesus said in Matthew 18, 16. But if he will not hear thee, and this is actually dealing with church discipline. Ooh, I was going to put a strong... Uh, post on Facebook that said, you know, every, you know, everybody wants to walk in God's blessing, but not everybody as, is as excited about God's correction. Amen. If you want to walk in the fullness of His blessing, you have to say, Lord, here am I. Correct me where I need to be corrected. I, I'm doing everything right. I'm just doing everything. I don't understand why God didn't come through for me. No. Correct me where I need to be corrected. So here in Matthew 18, 16, in this, in this, Jesus is teaching on church discipline. He said, if he will not hear thee, bless his heart, then take with thee one or two more that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. So we find at least two or three scriptures. This is an, listen church, this is an Old Testament and a New Testament principle of the word. At least two or three witnesses. So for years, for years for healing, I like to take Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, that he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed and made whole if you study the Hebrew. So himself took our, then I go to Matthew eight seventeen. This is the second witness. The first witness was Isaiah. The second witness is Matthew. That it might be fulfilled by the prophet, what the prophet said. That himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Because he cast out the spirits with his word and he healed all that were sick. That's Matthew 8.16. And then in Matthew 
that it might be fulfilled. So Jesus came and fulfilled his own word. So he didn't just, God didn't just leave a word or a promise out there, but he himself fulfills it. He watches over his word to fulfill it. Then the third witness I get is Peter regarding healing. There's two or three witnesses. First uh, Peter 2.24. First Peter 2.24. Referring to the Lord Jesus. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. That we being dead to sin. One time that jumped off the page and slapped me upside the head. Dead to sin. Dead to sin. Dead to sin. That we being dead to sin might be alive unto righteousness. Amen? Is that right? By whose stripes what? Ye were healed. Brother Hagin was teaching this one, one day and a lady came up after service all excited and said, if I was healed, then I am healed. And he said, that's exactly right. And so Isaiah was looking forward to the cross. Peter is looking back to the cross. So you were healed. So it's not just some crazy, oh, that's that word of faith group. They think, you know, God can heal anything. Yeah. Based on what? Based on two or three witnesses as the Word of God prescribed. That's where your confidence is. Not, not in what you know some preacher says or something like that, but in God's Word. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. Then uh, 2 Corinthians 13.1, the Word of God said, Paul said, this is the third time I'm coming to you. <laughs> Bless his heart. Love is patient. Love is kind. <laughs> this is the tenth time I'm preaching this, but love is patient. So Paul said in 2 Corinthians 13, 1, this is the third time I'm coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. So Paul taught it this way. He said, he said some people, you know, instead of being Jesus followers, they pick their favorite preacher. Oh, I'm a, I'm a Paul follower. I'm an Apollos follower. He says... Paul was not crucified for you. Christ is not divided. He said, Paul planted, listen to this, Paul planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So there was three witnesses right there. there Paul was a witness of Jesus. Apollos was a witness of Jesus by, by uh, watering the seed that was already planted. And then God gave the increase, so he was the final witness. God's watching over His Word to perform it. Then, uh, 1 Timothy 5, 19, 1 Timothy 5 and 19, said, Against an elder, receive not an accusation. Well, that, <laughs> that shut a lot of gossip down the church right there. <laughs> There's too many people. Well, Thank God, not now, but you know, in times past, certain churches they say, well, "What? What?" After church, they say, "What are we having for lunch?" They say, "Roast pastor." <laughs> Amen. So, First Timothy, <laughs> I could tell that now. Several years ago, I might not have told that, but you're you're mature enough to receive it. Against an elder, receive not an accusation, but before two or three witnesses. Before two or three witnesses. Praise God. And then uh, Hebrews 10, 28. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 28. The Word of God said, He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. So this is a scriptural precedent the way God works. If, if we want faith that gets results, we, we do it according to how the kingdom operates. Not how our own thinking... God, this is the way it should go. God says in two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Amen. You know, based on the witness of the word, I, I talk I talk to checking accounts. I start speaking Philippians 4. But my God shall supply all my needs. 
according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I start talking, I start talking scriptures. Is that a checking account? Uh, there's bills coming up, so you need to fill up. And if you get depleted, I'm going to start speaking re replenishment to you. See, God is not just a plenisher. God is a replenisher. Amen. So when he spoke, this is not even my notes, but when he spoke to Adam, the fivefold blessing, be fruitful, multiply, subdue and have dominion, he said, replenish the earth. How many of you know, you can't replenish or resupply unless you're plenished, unless you're supplied. So God is not just a plenisher. God is a replenisher. What am I saying to you? If He met your need yesterday, He'll do it again. If you got a testimony of God coming through, sometimes we wish He was early, but thank God He's, he's always right on time. <laughs> sometimes you say, Lord, can it be a little bit, you know. But uh, He's always right on time. Praise God. Amen. And then we'll close with this. If we want faith that gets results, we've got to meditate on the Word or speak the Word, read the Word, talk the Word. And one of, one, one of the biggest blessings God gave me, because He knew, I mean, He knew in my life it was a calling to ministry. So it was tough for me knowing that to work in secular corporations sometimes. I was challenged with it. But God always gave me somebody I'd never met in my life to talk scripture with. There was always somebody that we could talk the word with. I said, thank you, Lord. That, that means more to me. That, that, that's such a blessing. <laughs> somebody we can talk scripture together. But Psalm 1, it's the very first psalm, said, blessed is the man, fortunate, happy to be envied. That's us. You know, when the blessing comes on you, the world envies you. The Bible said Isaac was so blessed the Philistines envied him. <clears throat> blessed is the man that what? Walketh not, number one, in the counsel of the ungodly. The world's got a lot of counsel in a lot of areas. Well, you should do this. You should do that. You need to do this. Number two, nor standeth in the way of sinners. Well, I'm just trying to be a light to them. Well, don't, don't let what's on them rub off on you. Amen. And the next thing you know, you're not interested in the things of God. Thirdly, what? Sitteth in the seat of the scornful. There's those that just sit back and kind of mock and criticize. I mean, they're not bearing any fruit themselves, but they do feel like their job is to criticize those who are doing something. Bless their hearts. Sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Which really, that's a spirit. If you get to the bottom root of it. And again, in prayer is where you deal with it. You can talk about me, you can talk about me, as much as you please, as much as you, you can talk about me, as much as you please. You can talk about me as much as you please, talk about you down on my knees. All my sins are washed away, oh praise the Lord. Oh the devil is mad, oh the devil is mad, and I am glad. Oh, the devil is man, and I am glad. The devil is mad, and I am glad. He lost a soul that he thought he had. All my sins are washed away. Oh, praise the Lord. See, instead of getting mad at somebody talking about you, I'm going to get them back. I'm going to get some revenge. It's going to be served up cold. It's going to be sweet. You, you, you just start, you start saying, oh, Lord, help me renew my mind. Father, I need help in this time, in this hour. The flesh is trying to rise up. Because we all feel that way. We all have feelings. Feelings didn't get born again. Your spirit did. And your flesh certainly didn't get born again. So it's got to be put under. But verse 2 said of Psalm 1, His delight is in the law of the Lord. Your pastor can't make you delight you. I can't, I can't guilt trip you in delighting in the law of the Lord or, or reading a chapter a day. But it's the Holy Spirit that draws you to not only say this is good for me, but you actually start to enjoy the Word. 
I used to love the way new Bibles smelled, the crisp pages, like turning there, the gold gilding on them. And oh, oh man, I was excited. <laughs> Got me a Bible. Some people, they say, oh, PlayStation 4. But you know, but, but a new Bible. I was like, man, look at it. My name's on it. There's a Holy Spirit dove on here. Look at the sword. Look out. Devil. Here's a two-edged sword. Woo! I'm going to be like Zorro. <laughs> <laughs> All them soldiers came after Zorro, you know. He's swinging on the chandelier and they can't get him. He's on the table. There's all those candles on the table. And they're all looking at him like, we want to grab Zorro. And he took out his sword. <laughs> and it looked like nothing happened. So they were like, we're not impressed, all them soldiers. Then he stomped his boot. And all them candles. <laughs> like, I'm just saying. So, you got your sword of the Spirit. You can just put that Jesus mark on that devil. Amen. I said amen. So the ungodly are not... Oh, I'm sorry. He shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water, brings forth his fruit in a season. His leaf shall not wither. Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Listen, this is a John 15, 7 key. The ungodly are not so, but like the chaff, which the wind drives away. Why? Because they didn't abide in the Word. So they have no life in them. I don't care how the world perfumes it, sprays it, lights it, wind machine, whatever. There's no life there. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous. There's a way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. So there's two ways. I'm either going to go the Lord's way or the ungodly way. But the Lord's way is the way to have faith that gets results. Amen? Amen. I really pray you got something out of that word this morning that you'll, that you'll utilize. Praise the Lord. Father, thank you so much for the word. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. If there be one person under the sound of my voice today, you've never made Jesus Christ your Lord, your Savior. I'm going to ask you to take a step of courage and raise your hand. I want to pray with you today to receive Jesus as your Savior. That your sins would be washed away. That you'd be born again into the family of God. Anybody today would raise your hand. Say, that's me. I need Jesus. Anybody today? Say, that's me. I need the Lord. Would raise your hand. I want to pray with you to receive Christ. I don't want you to leave this service today without knowing Jesus. This is your chance, your time. Anybody today? Raise your hand. Say, Pastor, that's me. Pray with me. Anybody today? Then we're just going to pray this out loud. Father God, Father God. I thank you. That if I confess with my mouth, Jesus is Lord, and I believe in my heart, God has raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. Thank God I'm saved, washed in the blood, and my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. I rejoice in it, and thank you, Lord, for the grace of to bear, to bear much fruit for your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Would you please stand as we dismiss today, praise God. I believe you got a deposit from the word today. Amen. And you're going to go out like Zorro and right the wrongs. Praise the Lord and the injustices. Come stand with me, please, Pastor Bev. She's way too young to be a grandma. Way too young. Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless thee and the Lord keep thee. And the Lord make His face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up His countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Our prayer is the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. We call you blessed. We love you. 
Don't forget, tonight at 7 o'clock, we'd love to see you back again. God bless you.